How do you explain what we mean by race being a social construct? When we say that race is socially constructed, there are really two things that we want to get across. One is the idea of race as something that we've built, we've constructed, and that makes it an invention. So race is really an idea that we human beings have come up with. And then the second piece that we try to get across is also the idea that race is a belief or an idea that we collectively created. It's a social creation. It's not just something, the work of some, some madmen somewhere, but it's an idea that we've all really shared and, and influenced and then passed along from, from one generation to the next. And so when we say that race is a human invention, a social construct, we are basically challenging people to rethink what they think about human bodies. If we know it's a social construct, but as you were just talking about, many people feel like we can categorize people into races based on the physical attributes. Why is that not right since we physically look different? I mean, we do say people are tall. We do say people are short. What is so interesting about exploring the ways in which race is socially constructed and not biologically grounded is that, again, it, it seems to dispute the evidence that we have before our very eyes. And so, you know, you'll hear people say all the time, you know, but I can see races. I can tell what race a person is from seeing them. So how could that possibly be a human invention? And what's really going on when we say that we see a person's race is that we're looking at certain bits of information from people. We're looking at certain things about them, like their skin color or their hair texture or their eye shape. And then we're taking that information and we're filtering it into a kind of model we have in our heads, kind of like a little computer program in our heads, which tells us where to assign people to a racial category based on those, those inputs. And where the social invention comes in is that our society tells us to look at just some things and then come to some conclusion about a person's race. If you think, first of all, you know, of the rainbow, right? It's, it's full of color. There's lots of different colors. Just like, you know, the human species does include biological diversity, right? There is variation in our biological traits as we move around the globe. And that's true on the surface level in terms of what we look like. And it's also true at the genetic level and in other levels that are invisible to us, like what blood type we have or whether we're lactose intolerant and all kinds of stuff like that. But what the rainbow also helps us understand is that there are no clear cut dividing lines anywhere along that spectrum. There's no, you know, red shades gradually into orange, which gray shades gradually into yellow and so forth. So there's no clear cut lines. So when we as human beings come along and say, there are two races in the world or three races or four races or five races in the world, it's like we're trying to chop up the rainbow at places that are convenient to us or that seem reasonable to us. But those dividing lines aren't coming from the rainbow itself. They're coming from our ideas about what should go together. The census is a prime example of how we construct race in this country. It's also used in other countries as well. Can you speak about the census and what that says about the United States? So the United States fielded its first census in 1790. And on that very first census, we had a race question. And we have always had a race question ever since. And that sets us apart from other countries. One of the reasons that race has played such a prominent role in our society, and that's reflected on, on our census, is simply because it was kind of a new sexy idea that we glommed on to when we were writing the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and putting together the first uh, political institutions of this nation it was written into the Constitution in the Three-Fifths Clause, which determined that slaves, people of African descent, would be treated as three-fifths of a person, of a white person. Um, it also appeared in our very first immigration laws, which determined that you had to be white in order to become a citizen. Amazingly enough, American Indians didn't make it onto our census until the 1800s, even though obviously they were here. But that tells you something about the ways in which these categories, these racial categories, didn't really reflect some objective reality, either about the nation itself or who was in it or about, you know, about humanity and its diversity. It really shows us that those categories just reflect our changing ideas about race. So really, 
Change is the rule, not the exception on our senses. And it's really the ultimate proof that these categories are coming from our imaginations, that we're constructing them.